Hey gang, Scott here. Uh, so this video uh, the, about the on one LUT filter. Uh, now I've done videos about the LUT filter before, the mechanics of it, the sliders and what they do and you know how to choose a LUT, all, all that stuff, you know, card showing up here, you can go see that video. But this here is prompted by a question. It's, you know, like, Scott, when, when you're looking at a photo, you know, how do you decide you want to use a LUT? Uh, and you know, why would you choose to use the LUT over some other you know, color treatment? And this is true of like, you know, really in general, any editing package you're using, you know, why not just hue or saturation or, you know, a split toning or a color grading? What, what are you looking for with the LUT? Uh, so um, I'll try to answer that question in this video. Uh, there's always a subjective nature to photography. And then specifically how I approach using the LUT filter in on one effects. Uh, and so let me talk to the photo that I have here on the screen. And when I look at this photo, the the, the color palette is is not what I want. It, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of orange bouncing around, you know, orange and like I guess kind of like you know wood grain tones between you know the the the, the lighting that's got that uh, that orangey tint to it, you know, the chairs. There's just a whole lot of that going there. It's not the the color palette that I want for the photo, and thinking about, well, what are the different tools that I have available to modify that color palette? Uh, well, you know, you have your basic white balance, warm, cool. Okay, I've, I've, I've handled that already. Uh, I could do something with color balance. That's really more for correcting, you know, color casts from uh, other lighting sources. And it works with like a, you know, a triplet of things where you can address highlights, mid-tone shadows with different tinting. It's, um, it's a variation um, in a sense to split tone where you'd pick a certain color tone for the shadows, a certain color tone for the highlights and blend between them. It's not quite really what I'm after here. Uh, I could use a series of photo filters and really target those using masks or luminosity masks. That's some pretty heavy lifting. That's when I'll turn to LUTs because a LUT will do a very, uh, can do a very complex color mapping of taking a particular color as well as saturation, you know, hue, saturation, luminance of one color and it maps it to another. That's what a LUT is, right? Look up table, you know, watch, watch the other video, I explain what a LUT is. And so that's kind of the, when am I choosing to use a LUT where I, I, I'm looking at a photo like this. The colors are just not where I want them. I want a different mood for the photo. I want a different feel. I might not even be sure exactly what I'm after. I just know that what I have on the screen, that's not what I'm looking for. So I'll add the LUT and then let me show you my approach to selecting a LUT and more importantly, customizing it and fine tuning it so that it really does match the, the vision that you have for your image. So, uh, so let's dive in. So let's add the LUT filter you know, to the the photo here, and we see a shift right away uh, you know, because there's some default LUT that gets applied. The color palette has shifted. This is you know, very blue, you know, quite a quite a you know cyan, turquoise, teal going on in the in the shadows. Not what I want for the photo, but we're just getting started here. So the way that I'll work with the LUTs in on one effects, there are a few different you know categories that come with the product, and then you can add your own if uh, other uh, you know you can get LUTs really from anywhere. You know, on one puts some out, you find LUTs online. These are standard format things. Import them when you want things. Um, I tend to do either color grading or if I'm looking for a black and white, um, LUTs with a black and white are an interesting way to go, a different than the black and white filter. Uh, maybe that's a, a topic for a different day. But for here, I want to go into color grading. And at this point, I'll open the LUT panel up. Whoops, there we go. And I'm going to switch to the keyboard. I, I just go with the arrow keys and I just start auditioning the different LUTs. And as I arrow down, my eyes are on the photo. I like that. And I'll just keep on going. Not what I'm looking for. That's definitely not what I'm looking for. I like that brighter, airier look. Not bad. And just kind of keep walking down the list, making a mental note. And when I see something I like, I, I, I'm not bad. I look over, I see, okay, Sierra. The other one I looked at was, um, um, it started with a C, Cam, Campili, Campini, something like that. So let's go back up to the top where I was closer to what I liked. It wasn't comfort classic. That was it. This uh this Campari. So I like that. So I'll choose that LUT. That's that's the, the first pass. You know, what am I gonna choose? Because the one thing you don't get with the LUT is you don't have control over 
what color shifts happen, right? You know, that's built into the LUT. The LUT defines, you know, color is A is going to be mapped to color B. And sometimes those are subtle, sometimes those are very strong. But once I've applied the LUT, I take a moment or two toggling off and on the LUT, just getting a feel for what it's doing. So I'm going to start with like this upper area here because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uniform color here, uniform surfaces. And if I turn off the LUT and then back on, you know, it's certainly brighter and it's uh, it's adding like a, a yellowish green kind of tint to it, you know, kind of a color cast. All right, that's happening. What about in the shadows? And so I kind of looking down here in the shadows. Let's uh, let's zoom in, get this closer to our, our palette. We can we can really get a good look. So it's 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 certainly like a bluish tint. I'm kind of looking here, you know, trying not too much to uh, to pay attention to uh, this woman's jeans because those will be blue. But you know, there's there's certainly a a bluer kind of cast happening there. Let's take a look maybe around in here. Yeah, so we certainly kind of at a at a general level, this is giving me kind of like a, a, a lighter, airier, yellowish green to the highlights, and some kind of subtle bluish cast in the shadows, and other things are, are kind of blending around. But I certainly like this has a better feel to me than the original here, and so I like the LUT. This is this is like I said, first pass. I've I've, I've chosen this is the one I want to work with for this photo. But now it's getting into customization. So for example, I said that the like, like kind of like these midtones, not so much the highlights, but these midtones are getting this uh, this particular color cast. Well, every filter we have blending options. And so we have highlights, shadows, skin. These sliders are like protection sliders. And so if I don't want things of you know, hitting the highlights or the shadows, I can crank things up. Skin is, is kind of like midtones. And so if I push this, notice I'm protecting the midtones. And I'll just push it all the way. All of that bluish, greenish, you know, brighter tinting is gone. Bring it back, bring it down. So if you don't like something, you can dial it back. Um, for the shadows in this photo, let's bring this up here again. If I want those shadows to stay a little bit deeper in this photo, I'll inch that up a touch. Let's take a look at highlights. How is highlights affecting things? So, you know, I have some level of control where, you know, like a classic color grading where you're doing highlights, midtones, shadows, I'm leveraging the protection sliders to tailor this LUT to my liking. That's one approach for it. Um, let me reset those values. And another approach that I will use is leveraging masks. Now that same notion, right? We know that LUTs will take a, a, a one color and map it to another color. And it will do that for, depending on the LUT, you know, thousands upon thousands of nuanced shades. And it will all start from shadows all the way to highlights, right? The LUT has to cover everything. And if we use a luminance mask, a luminosity mask, can say, you know, LUT will now affect the shadows less and the highlights more, like the default for a luminosity mask, right? If we add a luminosity mask, let me view the mask, no mask right now, lumen. This is the mask, so the shadow areas are getting next to no treatment of the LUT and, you know, the highlights would get everything. Let me reset that, turn off the view. Here's our LUT by default, click the lumen button, very different, right? And this is saying I'm, I'm not applying the LUT to the shadows. I am to the highlights. Invert the LUT, I'll get a different look. And this is fundamentally targeting the shadows, protecting the highlights. Couple that with your density slider. Let me switch this um, back to classic here. We're, we're hiding from the shadows. We are full strength on the highlights. The density slider will start to introduce more of the LUT into the photo, but in a nuanced way. And to illustrate that nuanced way, let me view the mask. So we're leveraging the mask here to temper the LUT. Now, as I take density farther down, notice more gray comes into the mask. I'm saying I have a luminosity mask, and by default, we have 
take everything away from the shadows, leave everything in the highlights. If I reduce the density, it's introducing some of that LUT, some of that mask is being removed from the shadows. I get more LUT into the scene, but again, still controlled and tempered by this luminosity mask, right? You know, this area down here, that shadows area we're looking at, it's still a darker gray than the rest of the photo. So I don't have full uh, strength of this LUT in this small area, but I have it at full strength in the highlights. And so, you know, that's a, it's a control that we have. And if you like, you want to have any, if you have any edges that are really, really sharp, introduce some feather into your mask. For color grading work, that's fine. That's nice. It's just, really just kind of smoothing out and blending things. So now looking at tailoring this down where I've you know, used the, the luminosity mask. We've chosen something. We've now added a mask, dialed back the strength of the mask, so we're applying LUT everywhere, just less so in the shadows, more so into the rest of the scene. What does it look like different here? If I reset the mask, this was the full strength. Undo. That's partial strength. I kind of like it a little bit stronger, so I'll, I'll decrease the density. Mostly masks there. This is this is getting really subtle, and I don't know how much of this will show through in YouTube compressed internet video. But if you've watched my stuff long enough, you know that I'm a I'm a guy who does subtle things. Reset, undo. That is pretty darn subtle. One more time, just so we can see the bigger difference. Reset, undo versus you know the full strength. We had with the LUT at the beginning of time, add the lumen back in, and then I'll, I'll tailor it this way. I do like a little bit of feather there. Uh, and it, these are the controls that we have, and you can use them together. If you really like, you know, I like the mask here, but you know what? It's still too strong in the shadows. Like, let me go back to the mask. If I were like, you know, I, 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 like, the, I like it really bright up in those highlights, but I, I'm introducing too much in the shadows over to the gear menu pull it away from the shadows. And I'm, I'm pushing it really hard so you can see the difference, right? So you can use these things together and really shape and craft that LUT to your liking. Key thing is to choose the, the, the LUT that, that works best for you, but know that you can temper it in the highlights, temper the midtones, temper the shadows. And of course, going beyond this, if now you've got most of your color palette set the way you like, but you know, I, I want a different kind of tint in the highlights or something else going on. You can still add photo filters, split tones, color balance, all the other filters that we have in Amon Effects. So um, that's really it for the, the LUT. That's, you know, kind of why I choose a LUT, you know, what makes me choose a LUT instead of other tools to start with. And then how to tailor that LUT to really shape it to your vision. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.